You know all those things that you're learning as you go with your boudoir photography business. I bet you wish that somebody would have told you what to expect before you jumped in with both feet. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. Today, I'm gonna share the 10 things that I wish that I knew before I became a boudoir photographer. By the way, point eight is the one that you're gonna wanna know no matter what level you're at, so make sure you stick around. Hey, I'm Tracy and I help boudoir photographers stay forever booked out without the hustle. Be sure to grab my free guide outlining my five best tips for booking clients without Facebook ads. The first thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is just because you build it does not mean that they're going to come. Sure, friends and family are going to come. They're never going to make good clients though. So here's what I typically see once a boudoir photographer starts her business. Most photographers open their business and then create a Facebook page, maybe an Instagram profile. Then they just wait for the bookings to roll right in. Unfortunately, that is not how it works. Bookings are not just going to roll in because you built it. It takes a very solid marketing strategy. You have to put yourself everywhere that your ideal client is if you want them to just roll right in. What I'm saying is once you build it, that's when the work really begins. And you're gonna either fall in love with your boudoir photography business or absolutely hate it at that point. If you want more information about booking clients with ease, bookmark this video to watch next. The second thing that I'd wish that I'd known before becoming a boudoir photographer is the client is always right even when they're not. You've heard that saying, I know, the client is always right. Well, it is true. When you're in business, the client really is always right. So let me walk you through an example. Let's say your client approves their album design, you send them their album, they're looking through it, but then they have a complaint that would honestly result in re-retouching those photos and reordering the album. First of all, problems happen. Panicking is a choice, so calm down. Now, technically, you're covered if they signed the approval form, but customer service-wise, the client is right in this situation. In this specific area, I would go ahead and reorder the album just to make the client happy. Sure, it's probably going to cost you another $150 to $300, depending on the situation, the album, all the things, but it's better than a bad review or no referrals. The most important thing is to go out of your way to make the client happy, but that's also when pricing matters and you need to make sure that you have profit built into your pricing so that you never lose money if this does happen. The third thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is if you have money mindset issues, your client is gonna have money mindset issues. So you need to make sure that you have worked through those issues before really starting your business and it taking off. Let me tell you about a photographer that's in my Six Figure Simplified program. She has severe money mindset issues and she was projecting it onto her clients. So a client would reach out, they would go over pricing, and then she would word vomit extra information at them that they didn't even need to know. And what she was doing was making the session about money because she herself was insecure about the money situation. She was insecure about what she was charging and her own value. In turn, the client would become concerned about money as well. That would either result in them not booking or a really low sale. Sometimes you are the problem and you need to work on yourself internally for your business to actually succeed. If you feel desperate, you will project that onto your clients you'll end up staying in that scarcity mindset for the entirety of your business. So let's say that you just need to make money to keep the lights on like you are in that point in your business. Instead of lowering your prices to book more clients, maybe consider getting a part-time job. Maybe take on other photography jobs like maybe real estate or something like that. You could even second shoot some weddings while you're getting on your feet. That will help you keep the bills paid while not undervaluing yourself and your work. Make sure that you're thinking long-term instead of in the moment. Remember, you do want sustainable freedom. And speaking of sustainable freedom, if this is something that interests you, you're definitely gonna wanna check out my podcast, Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. In this podcast, I cover everything boudoir photography, running the business, shooting tips, business tips, marketing tips, pricing tips, all the things boudoir photography related. I even talk to other photographers who all view sustainable freedom differently in their business. I'll make sure to link it in the show notes. The fourth thing that I wish that I would have known before starting my boudoir photography business is how to take criticism. As I've ran my photography business and actually this education business as well, I've had to learn how to take criticism and really to grow a thick skin. 
a little backstory. It was like in 2015, I went to my first Jared Gillness workshop. And on that first day, we had to bring our 20 best images and he was gonna critique them in front of 20 other photographers, which is awesome, right? You get critiqued by one of the best photographers in the world. Problem is, it was happening in front of 20 other photographers, so I was getting torn apart in front of 20 other photographers. So we really had to let our guard down and be very open-minded to the critiques. The goal was we could all learn from the other mistakes other photographers were making and learn from the critique ourselves. I honestly think that this was the best experience for me. Since then, I know how to take critique like a champ. I never let my emotions get in the way anymore. Another thing handling critique is gonna help you with is handling critique from the public about your actual photography or even like husbands who come into the studio and critique your photos or even your pricing. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen sometimes. I honestly think that it's really easy to handle if it's from the public. I usually just delete the comments. Doesn't bother me at all. The ones from a client's husband is so much worse though. One time early in my career, I let a husband come to the ordering session with the wife and throughout the whole session, it was just miserable. He was critiquing her, telling her she didn't look great, couldn't believe that she looked the way she looked and that I let her be photographed in front of my camera and she just looked awful. Like she was crying by the time the ordering session was over. And I ended up just kicking them out of the studio because I don't need that in the studio. I don't need that negativity. And they had their own things. They needed to be working out themselves. I didn't need to be a part of that. And since then, I don't allow husbands in the ordering session without prior approval. And they have to verbally agree that this is a judgment-free zone during the ordering session. And then I kick them out when we start talking money. And thankfully, since then, I've never dealt with another husband like that, but it was a big learning curve, that very first one. The fifth thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is just because you're talented does not mean that you're gonna be successful. There is so much more to running a business than just being talented. I've seen the most talented photographers fail in business while the mediocre photographers are super successful. And it's because they put their business first. The photographers who are successful, they know their numbers. They know how to sell when they need to sell. They're not scared of selling. Sometimes we have to build their confidence when they're talking about selling, but most of the time they understand that they have to sell and they're open to it. And they know how to market their business and book out their schedules. Sometimes they just intuitively know how to market. Some of them might have taken classes and some of them might have had to get a coach. But regardless, they put their marketing first. They don't put the art first and that's the difference. Some of these things you're probably not gonna just know how to do and that's okay. But they are skills that you can easily learn with education, training, and just knowledge in general. The sixth thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is the fear never goes away. How you handle the fear is what matters. You're gonna wonder, when will you get your next client? Will you make enough to pay your expenses? Will the success you have right now last? Will you ever be successful? Are you going to be able to leave your nine to five? No matter what level you're at, you're going to have some sort of fear. Sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's marketing, sometimes you feel burnt out and you're wondering if you can keep going. Here's what I want you to know, you can work through this. Remember, the most successful people, they keep going. That's why they're successful. They keep going even if there's fear in the back of their minds. An episode of my podcast that you might really appreciate if you're having some mindset issues is episode 94 with one of my photographers in Six Figure Simplified. The seventh thing that I wish that I would have known before starting my boudoir business is you have to get comfortable with saying no. Your business is only as strong as your boundaries. And as women, our people pleasing tendencies might lead to lower boundaries. Remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should. If you don't wanna work weekends, don't work weekends. Don't wanna work evenings, don't work evenings. Once you set your prices, stick with them. Don't lower them just because a client says that they're too high. Make sure that you price for the lifestyle that you want. If you set up your business strategically, you know your cost of doing business so you know what you need to make. You know what you need to be priced at. If you set your session schedules with intention, you know how many sessions you need per month and at what sales average you need. You know these things if you are strategic. And if you know those things, then you know how to say no and you can do it confidently if they don't align with your own boundaries. The eighth thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is momentum is crucial. It might take you a bit to get going, but once you get that momentum, you will know it. I've told you guys before, but it took me 10 months 
to book my first client when I moved to St. Louis. But as soon as I booked that one client, I started booking more and more and more until I was staying booked out months in advance. Within two months of booking that first client, I was booked out for six months. And since then, I haven't slowed down. If you're in the thick of building your marketing strategy, do not give up. The momentum is right around the corner. You might not be seeing results right now, but stick with it. They will come if you're following a proven strategy. The ninth thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is the amount of work that a photography business requires is unreal. But the thing is though, it doesn't last forever. Make sure that you don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day of client work. You don't wanna be stuck doing the retouching, the album design, the album sales, the client sessions. You don't want to only work in your business. You need to make sure that you have time to work on your business so that it can grow and scale. Yes, those scaling parts of your business, that is unpaid work. But if you wanna make more than you are right now, you have to do that unpaid work. This involves strategic planning and it might require you to invest in yourself. But this strategic planning and this work on your business is going to help you get further. It's gonna get you out of survival mode so you're not just always working in your business. That's how you get that time and financial freedom. The 10th thing that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer is there's a secret to outsourcing and it's gonna save you a lot of those unpaid hours. You need to prioritize income producing activities. Back in 2018, I was bogged down with retouching. Like I had an eight to 12 week turnaround time and I just could not keep up. There was no way that I could keep up with all the sessions that I had. And I knew that marketing was a priority if I wanted to continue to grow my business, but I was just getting further and further behind with my retouching. The general rule is that I will outsource when the money that I spend on outsourcing is less than the money that I could make during the time that I would spend actually retouching or doing whatever that task is. So the reason that I outsourced my retouching is I was spending so much time on it when I could be marketing or photographing more clients. So I would be making more money doing those two tasks rather than retouching my photos. Sure, my marketing is technically unpaid, but it is an income producing activity, meaning I'm booking more clients clients and that will result in more money. I need to book more clients so that I can stay booked out for longer periods of time for more months in advance, you know? And that's why it's also imperative that your pricing is set up so that when you do get paid, you're also getting paid for all that unpaid work that you're doing. And those are the 10 things that I wish that I would have known before becoming a boudoir photographer. Be sure to subscribe to get notified on my next video and it's called best camera settings for boudoir photography. And while you wait for that, check out this other video, common photography marketing mistakes to avoid. If this was helpful, let me know and give it a like. Bye. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.